Awesome. I've told you guys lately that I love you. I love you guys. I love you guys. Favorite people in the world, no doubt. Well, tonight we are going to be finishing up our series, Stuff You Wish He Never Said, where we've been looking at some of the more hard things that Jesus has said. And tonight, as we're closing out that series, we're going to be looking at how what you trust is what you treasure. What you trust is what you treasure. Now, each of us in here, we treasure something, or at least someone, right? Whether it's school and how well you do in school, or maybe you treasure not going to school because it's Thanksgiving break, or you treasure a relationship, or a game you play. We all treasure something in our lives. And what I have found is that whatever we treasure, we also tend to trust. Let me give you a couple examples. I treasure my coffee maker. You know why I treasure my coffee maker? Because I trust that my coffee maker will pour out that magical juice that will sustain me throughout the rest of the day so I am not a zombie throughout the rest of the day. I also trust other things such as my laptop. I trust my laptop. I treasure my laptop because it is how I write my sermons. It's how I watch all my YouTube videos. It's just, it, it is something that I deeply treasure. And whatever we treasure in our lives, we tend to also trust. And so today, as we're going to be talking about how what you trust is what you treasure, we're going to be looking at what are the right things in our life for us to treasure and trust, and what are the wrong things for us to not treasure and to not trust. And we're going to be looking at that in a story about Jesus. And the story goes this way. Jesus, he's walking down the street one day. This guy runs up to Jesus full speed, falls down on the ground right at his feet. Jesus looks down at him, and the guy, he had grown up knowing about God. Have you ever had a question in the back of your head that you've just, it, it's there and you wanted to ask it? This guy, he had grown up around God, he knew who God was, and he had, he had a question in the back of his head. So he runs up to Jesus, he falls down on Jesus' feet, and he asks him this question. He says, good teacher, what must I do to get into heaven? This pretty intense and dramatic scene that unfolds, this guy runs up to Jesus, falls at his feet. I love Jesus. He's not even phased by this. He's not even surprised by this. He just kind of looks down at the guy. He's like, oh, normal day, day in the life of Jesus. Looks down at him. And he says, well, hey, you know the Ten Commandments, right? Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't commit adultery. How have you done with those growing up? The guy begins to have a little bit of hope. He hears this question about the Ten Commandments and there's a little smile that comes to his face and he shouts out to Jesus, well, you know, I've actually done pretty well at those. I've been pretty good at keeping the Ten Commandments. I've done a pretty good job of that. Things start looking up for this guy. The question that he asked, it seems like it's going the way he wanted it to. But Jesus, he thinks a little bit differently than most people. So Jesus, he looks at the guy and he loves him. He knows everything he's ever done in the past, everything he's going to do in the future, and he loves him. And Jesus says, great. You've kept the rules. You've done a good job keeping the Ten Commandments. But here's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to take everything you have. I want you to sell it, give it to the poor, then follow me. The guy is absolutely shocked. He can't believe what Jesus just told him. What had seemingly looked like a hopeful situation because he had been such a good rule follower his whole life turns out to be not exactly what he had hoped it to be. He was a really rich guy. He was making it rain, man. He had the Lamborghinis. He lived in a mansion. He was living the life. And Jesus asked him to give it all away so that he could follow him. And so, crushed and shocked, the man walks away sad not following Jesus. Jesus' disciples, they were right beside him the whole time. They had uh, heard this whole episode that had unfolded and Jesus turns over to his disciples and he says to them, how hard is it for the rich to get into heaven? It is easier for a camel, yeah, the big two humped animals that are really ugly looking. He said it's easier for a camel 
to pass through a tip of a needle than it is for a rich person to get into heaven. His disciples also become shocked. They can't believe that Jesus would say such a thing. So they respond to Jesus and say, well, Lord, who can ever be saved then? Is there anybody that can get into heaven? Jesus, he turns over back to his disciples. He looks them square in the eye and he says, with man, it is impossible. But with God, it is possible. In this story, it's found in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 27. We're going to be looking at how what you trust is what you treasure. So here's the first point. Is don't treasure your performance. Don't treasure your performance. Verses 17 through 20. I just told the story. Jesus started on his way, and a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him, and says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. Teacher, he declared, all these things I've kept since I was a boy. I've done a good job since I was really little. I was raised up in this stuff. No problem, Jesus. Do you notice that this guy's question is first about his efforts? Good teacher, what must I do to get into heaven? This question is so me-focused. What can I do to make it? He calls Jesus teacher. He doesn't really seem to approach Jesus as God. He just kind of seems like he views Jesus as just another really good, skilled teacher that maybe has some good advice to give him. So he goes, hey, Jesus, you seem to be a really good teacher. You seem to be a really smart guy. Do you got any tips on something I could do to get into heaven? His focus is completely turned on his own performance in life. Do you ever do that? Do you ever tend to focus more on your own performance in life, whether it's in sport, academics, or your church attendance, or how much you've sinned or not sinned that week? Do you focus more on your own performance more than just on following Jesus? Because here's the deal. When we focus only on our performance, and when we treasure our performance, it is the most tiring way to live. Let me say that again. When you treasure your performance, it is the most tiring way for you to live. Here's why. Nobody is perfect. Nobody bats a perfect 100. Nobody is going to have a perfect performance. Even the best athletes in the world do not perform perfectly. I am pained to remember last year's season with the Golden State Warriors. Okay, it was the best season ever. They had the best record ever. It was awesome. Steph Curry was dropping threes like crazy. Just when you thought he couldn't drop another one, he dropped like five more. It was just, it was amazing. They make it all the way to the finals. And what happens? They totally blow it. They melt down what had appeared to be the perfect season ended up being a living nightmare that truthfully spiraled me into a two-week depression. It was terrible. But right, what seemingly was probably the best team of all time, they choked at the end. Nobody performs perfectly, including you. And if you treasure your performance, you will end up being a very tired and a very depressed individually. Because here's the deal. All of us are going to fall short and all of us are going to sin and all of us are going to mess up. You don't base your life off your own performance. You base it off of Christ's perfect performance for you. You will never live a perfect life, but he did. You still may stumble periodically if you're in relationship with Jesus, but he never did. That's what the cross is all about. It's all about us not being able to perform perfectly, but for him to say, you know what, I know you're not going to make it all the way, so here's what we'll do. I'll let you get all the benefits of my perfect life And I'll take on all the garbage from your sin. Don't depend on your own performance. 
Their performance is just going to fail you. There's something much better to treasure than your own performance. And that takes us to our second point, which is this. Trust a better treasure. Trust a better treasure. The man, he runs up to Jesus. He falls at his feet. He seems happy about his performance. And it it says in verses 21 through 22, Jesus looked at him and loved him. I think that's so cool. Before Jesus says this huge thing, it says that he loved him. What he's about to say is really hard, but he says it because he loves him. Jesus says, one thing you lack. Go sell everything you have. Give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. This man had lived a life that was so focused on his performance, so focused on so many things. And Jesus offers him a new kind of life. Something more than just trying to make it on your own. He says, hey, get rid of all the stuff that you have. Come follow me. Each of you in here have the choice to trust this better treasure, to follow Jesus, to give him all of your life for the rest of your life. We all have a choice in here to either trust the same treasure that the world sees as valuable or to trust the treasure that is truly valuable. And that treasure is following Jesus. Let me say it this way. Okay, if somebody's house is on fire, okay, what do you do all right, you, you run inside and you, 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 you take stuff to put it outside so it doesn't burn, right? What, what, would you typically, what would you typically do, okay? What type of stuff would you take out of your house if your house had started a fire? Family. Family. People. Okay, people, that's a good one. All right, what about stuff? What kind of stuff would you take? Computers, some valuable things, right? So if there is a fire that has started in your house and you're starting to take stuff out and put it outside so it doesn't get burned, it doesn't get destroyed, what are you going to take? Valuable stuff. Whether it's maybe a sentimental photo of your family or something valuable or maybe a loved one, you're going to take those valuable things because they mean a lot to you outside. Or like Jordan, if you don't take anything, you just take yourself out of the fire because you're valuable or whatever. You just you take whatever you can. If it's a huge fire, then you can't take other stuff. And you just get out there yourself. But the point is, you want to take something out of there that's valuable so it doesn't get messed up. Okay, now imagine this, all right? There's a fire going on in my house and I'm running inside and I'm taking pens, I'm taking paper clips, I'm taking pieces of paper, taking it out of the house. Now I got to save this. This is really valuable stuff. You'd be like, Josh, this is, uh, you got your priorities mixed up, dude. You're risking your life for pens and paper clips? I could buy that at Office Max for a deal of $5.99, like a 60-pack. What are you doing, man? But here's the deal. A lot of us in here, we have our priorities mixed up like that. We value, we put a high value on the wrong things, and we put a low value on the things that are truly valuable. And here in this moment, Jesus is inviting this guy to trust the better treasure, which is following him. And each of you in here have that same opportunity to really trust the better treasure that is following Jesus. Because here's the deal. You're going to have all these opportunities in your life to do a bunch of things. You already do have a bunch of opportunities. But following Jesus and everything that comes from him is the only thing that's going to last forever. All the other treasures that you have in your life, whether it's a relationship or an accomplishment that you make, you know what? None of those things may be necessarily bad, but here's the deal. If that's your number one treasure in life, then you got your values mixed up. Because following Jesus and everything that comes from him is the only thing that lasts forever. So my question to you is, what do you treasure most? Don't, don't, get, don't get me mixed up here when I say that. I'm not saying, what should you treasure most? I don't want you to think of the church answer. Oh yeah, I know. Treasure Jesus first. I know that. No, what do you treasure? What do you really treasure most? Look at your time. Look at your energy. Look at your effort. Look at your thoughts. 
What do you really treasure most in life? Is it following Jesus? Or is it something else? Number three. Don't let your earthly treasure keep you from heavenly treasure. Don't let your earthly treasure keep you from heavenly treasure. Verses 23 through 24. At this, the man's face fell. He was pretty upset. And he walked away sad because he had great wealth. He was making it rain. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. This guy, he let his earthly treasure get in the way of receiving heavenly treasure, which is truly the better treasure. We live in the richest area in the entire world, okay? Almost half of the world's wealth is just in America alone, okay? And then on top of that, we live in the Bay Area, which is like one of the richest, if not the richest areas in America, okay? And some of you might be like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not that rich. You know, I have some friends that live in big mansions or whatever. I'll tell you what, you compare the poor here, and they're like living it up to compared to like people in Africa, okay? And so when Jesus is talking to this guy, he's really talking to us. Jesus is saying, hey, it is really hard for rich people to get into heaven. It is really, really hard for that to happen. You know why? Because it's so easy to get distracted and caught up in all the riches. You ever heard the saying, more money, more problems? Man, it's true. You got more money, you got more problems. Because all this stuff that we have, it is a huge distraction. In 1972, there was, uh, yeah, way back in the day, even before I was born. Uh, in 1972, there was a, a plane crash in Miami. It was really tragic. Uh, 101 people died. But one of the things that was interesting about this particular plane crash is that it wasn't a normal one. Uh, through further research and finding out why the plane had crashed, they found out that the reason the people crashed the airplane was because Within the pilot's area, there was a minor malfunction light that was blinking. And the people had gotten so focused on the malfunction light and trying to just fix this minor malfunction that was going on in the plane that they had forgot that the autopilot was off. And they forgot to do what they really needed to do, which was fly the plane. And it was too late when they realized... And it was a really big problem. And in our lives today where we have so many distractions, we have so many riches, we have so much stuff, whether it's between clothes, money, video games, TV, I mean, we have a lot of stuff. You know what the problem is when you go to the store these days? It's not if you could find anything, it's like what you choose. Like you go to the soap section and it's like, okay, do I want dove? Do I want... Dove, do I want dial? Do I, you know, it's like, there's like eight different, there's like eight different, you know, brands of everything. It's like, okay, do I want, you know, Captain Crunch, Frosted Flakes? Do I want the fake Frosted Flakes? Do I want Raisin Brand? Don't get that. That's disgusting. Okay, it's like, there's just so much stuff around us. It's ridiculous. So many distractions. So many flashing lights that are so easy for us to just focus on that. And when we focus on them, we end up headed in a place that we would have never thought we would be in. Don't let the earthly treasures in this world keep you from the true heavenly treasures of following Jesus. We truly need to stay focused on the treasures of following Jesus whether it's through reading our Bible or through praying, we don't need to be so focused on all this stuff. If you spend more time thinking about all the things of the world but spend almost no time in prayer and no time reading in your Bible, you got a problem. You got a huge problem. 
You were made by God and you were made for God. And for you to think that you could spend all the time in the world on all this stuff that's around us without actually connecting to God by praying or reading your Bible, that's a really big problem. Don't let the earthly treasures in this life keep you from the true heavenly treasures. And I'm not saying that stuff about reading your Bible and praying because I'm trying to get on you and legalistic and, oh, you need to do this. What I'm saying is it's so much better than what you can see. And if you would just give it more time and step out in faith and dedicate more of your time to giving your time to God, your life would change. I guarantee it. He would do things in your life that you'd never think. So don't let your earthly treasure keep you from heavenly treasure. Number four, depend on God's power to find the better treasure. Depend on God's power to find the better treasure. The disciples were even more amazed and they said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible. But not with God. All things are possible with God. We've been talking today about how what you trust is what you treasure. But here's the deal. Everything we've been talking about today, finding the better treasure that is following Jesus, it's impossible for each and every one of you to do here. It is literally impossible to do that. It's impossible. I've heard some people say this. Maybe you have too. I've heard people say, well, you know, he found God or I found Jesus. No, you didn't. He found you. It is impossible for us to just treasure God and to find him on our own. That's the whole point of Jesus coming from heaven to earth is that he had to come to us. He had to find us. He had to make what was impossible with just our own abilities and make it possible through his abilities. That's what the good news is all about. And so if you're in here and you want to either become a Christian or you want to grow as a Christian, your first priority is for, not for you to try to get to God. Your first priority is to see how God has got to you. To look to him and how he can make it possible and how he has loved you and how he has wanted to save you and had a relationship with you. I once heard this story. This guy, he went up to this pastor and he was really upset, depressed even. He had uh, grown up in the church and uh, gotten pretty worn out. And he walked up to this pastor and he goes, you know, pastor, I've been... uh, I've been trying really hard lately to love God more, but I just, nothing's been working. I really, my love for God hasn't really been growing. In fact, it's been, it's been lessening. I find it harder to go to church. How how do I love God more? I love, I love, I love the pastor's response. He responded by saying this. He goes, if you want to love God more, all you need to do is simply look at how much he loves you. Because if you knew how much he loved you, you wouldn't help but just love him back. Let me just say that again. If you see how much God loves you, there is no way that you wouldn't be able to love him back. That's how much the power God's love has. When you truly see how much you really need God and how he died for you even though you didn't deserve it and how much he loves you and how he made everything that was impossible in your life possible through dying on the cross and rising again so that we could have a relationship with him. When you see that love, man, your love for God will grow much more than it ever has in your life. So don't try to treasure God. Don't try to treasure Jesus by just, like this guy did by his performance. Don't try to do it on your own power. It's impossible for you to follow Jesus on your own power. But that's actually the good news. It's not our power. It's his power. And all we need to do is simply look to him and trust him and just say, God, you know, I'm done trying to do it on my own. I'm going to give you all of my life for the rest of my life. 
I'm just going to close up here in a few moments. But let me just, let me close with this story. Tonight we've been, we've been talking about how what you trust is what you treasure. And uh, I don't think I'm crazy to say probably each and every one of you in here at one point or another have probably treasured the wrong things in your life. You've trusted the wrong things in your life. I remember I was 15 and a half years old. And I was so excited because I was on my way for my permit test. And I was, I was juiced. I was excited. My, uh, my best friend that I've had since, well, we were born. We've been best friends forever. Our birthdays are within two weeks of one another. So we plan it out perfectly. We're both going to go to the DMV together. We're going to take our test together. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. We get there. I come to find out that there was a bunch of paperwork that I needed to fill out. So I had to drive three hours to get the paperwork filled out, waited in a line for an hour, drove back with the paperwork. My friend passed the test earlier at the right time with flying colors. It was amazing. I was so happy for him. I have this four-hour drive extravaganza thing. I run over the DMV. There's like 30 minutes before they're closed. I'm stressing out. I rush, finish the test. I believe uh, you can only miss seven or eight on the, on the test. Whatever it was, I, I, I had one more question wrong than you're allowed to have. One, I, I missed it by one question to pass. I was so pissed <laughs> off. My friend got it before me. I was like, are you kidding me? Dakota got it before me. Are you kidding me? I had to drive around all town all day, and then I fall short. I was so mad. My mom, I remember, she, I got in my mom's car. We drove home. I'm on my way. I'm stomping towards the front door. I take my phone out. Boom! Chuck it on the ground. It splits all in half. It's just all over the place. I was so mad. Why was I mad? I was pissed off because I had treasured getting that permit. Man, I was so excited for that. I was so excited for that possibility of being able to, in a very short amount of time, be able to drive around and get out of my parents' house and hang out with my friends and do a bunch of fun stuff. But I failed the test and didn't do that, and I was really pissed off. Now, there are a lot of things in your guys' life, like that permit test, that you are going to treasure so much that when you don't get it your way, it's going to feel like life itself is just crumbling down. And you just don't know what to do. But I'll tell you what. Whatever it is in your life that you treasure, none of it is more valuable than Jesus. There may be something that you're really looking forward to right now. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's something that you really wanted to accomplish or someone that you really want to have a connection with. There might be something in your life right now that you, when, when I'm talking about there's something in your life that you're treasuring, it just, it comes in your mind. Well, whatever that is, I can guarantee you 100% without a doubt that Jesus is infinitely more valuable than that. He's more valuable. And so don't live your life just so focused on all these treasures that are around us, these things that can be so alluring. That's what temptation is. Why do you get tempted to sin? Because it looks good. Because it feels good, if we're really honest. Sin feels good in the moment. It does. That's why you do it. But in reality, it isn't good because it always leaves you in, to death. Don't get caught up in these treasures all around us that seemingly look so good because none of it is more valuable than the treasure that is found in Jesus. None of it is more valuable. His love for you is the only thing that will last forever. And it's the only thing that each and every one of you need now. Let's pray. Well, I don't uh, know where each and every one of you are right now. But uh, I do know that everybody in here has at least some things that they treasure and they, that you look forward to and you want. 
And I think a lot of us, we can get caught up in something that we, we really want and that looks really good to us, that we tend to realize how valuable Jesus really is in our lives. And so if you're in here and maybe you've been going through a time or maybe you've, you've as I was talking today, you've realized, you know, man, I've been, I've been caught up in maybe some things that, you know, maybe they're not bad in and of themselves, but I've gotten so caught up in these treasures that I've, uh, I've missed really the real treasure in life and following Jesus. And if that's you, uh, I just want you to pray this prayer along with me. And it's just basically saying, you know, God, I, I just want to get my priorities straight with you. And thank you. You can just pray it along with me. God, I thank you that you truly are more valuable than anyone or anything else. And God, I thank you that we know that because you were willing to die for us on the cross for our sins in our place and to rise again even though we had sinned and not seeked you and we've seeked other things. So God, right now, with everything I have, I just want to ask that with everything in my life that seems impossible, with all my shortcomings, with all my sins, with all the things that I do wrong, Lord, I ask that what seems impossible for me to do myself, that you would make possible through your power and through your love. God, I'm done trying to perform. I'm done trying to make it on my own. I'm giving you all of my life. I'm giving you the opportunity to call all my shots, all the shots in my life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.